let's welcome uh, Chris and James then, guys. So thank you very much for being here. And do you want to just start? I've got a few questions for you. Do you want to just start, let people know um, what your, your background is and, and kind of how you got involved in the Bitcoin world and what Bridge to Bitcoin is all about, please? Of course, yeah. Thank, thank you very much, um, Rob. Um, I'll, I'll kick things off and then I'll, I'll pass the, the mic over to James. Um, so thank you everyone for, for having us on the call and hello to everyone who's hopefully watching the recording as well. Uh, so my name's Christopher Gordon. Um, a little bit of background about myself. Um, so I, I wear or I did wear quite a few hats, um, but the hat that um, is most relevant to what I'm talking about today is I did do a little bit of business angel investing. Um, and I came across um, Bitcoin in the year 2017, and it came across my desk as a bit of deal flow. Um, and I immediately thought, oh, that's that's really interesting. Um, but these other things called cryptocurrencies are really interesting too. Um, so I, I had a, a dip in the, I dipped my toe into cryptocurrencies as opposed to, to Bitcoin, because these cryptocurrencies were promising these returns of 100x or 1000x so how could i how could i possibly not look at those and so as i say i dipped my toe in that space well more than my toe i dipped my ankle and my thigh and well i probably got waist deep actually in the crypto space and i i ended up making um, a bit of money but i lost uh, a hell of a lot of money um and when i eventually came back to my senses when i realized that the fundamentals of bitcoin is the is where where it stacks up um and that's probably a good place for me to maybe just do a quick 101 on bitcoin just for for those of you who aren't uh, familiar with what it is and um, i'm sure james will will expand a little bit a little bit on on this i'm going to keep it really brief because it's you don't have to be a fan of bitcoin if you like you don't have to um, be someone who who advocates for bitcoin for the purposes of accepting bitcoin in your business um but so a bit of a one on one, as I say, on Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is a Bitcoin's many things. But when you, if we want to keep it really simple, we can look at it purely as a, a digital money um, or a digital currency. And it's designed, and it is a a peer to peer money. And what that means is there's no intermediary involved. Um, so some people call it digital gold. Um, some people call it um, the people's money or freedom money uh, because essentially uh, bitcoin separates money from state um, which i think would hopefully appeal to you guys that i'm talking to on this call um, and that's really important to remember there isn't this intermediary and there are two fundamentals that make bitcoin different from all currencies that exist and when i say all currencies i mean cryptocurrencies um and also what we call fiat currencies so fiat is a latin word for essentially means by decree so when i say fiat currencies we mean government currencies and those two fundamentals that i'm talking about are bitcoin is what we call scarce or finite so there will only ever be 21 million bitcoin uh, the number's kind of arbitrary but the, the point being that it's scarce um if you look at all other currencies that exist, the opposite is true. Um, they can print more or create more. So certainly with cryptocurrencies, founders or board members or CEOs, they can say, oh, we need to digitally create more Bitcoin. Or when we look at fiat currencies like the UK government and the Bank of England, they can create more money through debt or through issuance of bonds. The same with the US dollar. Um, the Federal Reserve and the US government can do similar. Um, I love the Federal Reserve, actually, uh, in so much as I love the fact that the Federal Reserve um, is not federal. And they hold no reserves. So they're a private entity with no reserves. So, yeah, it's 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 fascinating. And of course, the US dollar and and currencies across the globe now are, aren't, aren't backed by gold. So often there's this uh, mis misunderstanding or uh, that our currencies are backed by something. Uh, they're not. Um, so Bitcoin is this wonderful new technology, essentially, that separates money from state. Um, and we're seeing an uptake in Bitcoin across the globe, both individually and through businesses and through corporations, uh, because 
but it is not um, controlled by anyone. And that comes back to the second point that I mentioned. So the first I mentioned was it's finite um, or scarce. And the second is it's decentralized. Um, so I, I just touched on that. Um, so by decentralized, it's not controlled by any one individual or corporation. Um, it's the opposite. Anyone can partake in Bitcoin. Anyone can partake in the issuance of it or controlling of the Bitcoin, what we call the Bitcoin ledger uh, through nodes. And um, yeah, I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm going to stop it there because I can end up talking about Bitcoin a lot. But the, the whole point of this call is not to talk about Bitcoin and what it is, but to, to explain to you how easy it is to accept Bitcoin and what we can do to you to essentially help you um, drive. And our pitch at Bridge to Bitcoin is that we can drive additional footfall and additional revenue to your business by tapping into this untapped customer base of the Bitcoin community. Um, I could ramble on for hours, so I'm going to pass the mic over to James um, um, and so that James can explain a little bit about himself and how he got involved in Bitcoin. Hi, everybody. So I, I'm, I, I didn't discover Bitcoin until 2020. Um, I worked in financial services for 20 years. Um, I'm an accountant by profession. So, uh, yeah, if you, if you had any accounting questions, if you were to start, to, you know, I, I can help you with that as well uh, in terms of accounting for, for Bitcoin. Um, and uh, I, I took I got the opportunity for early retirement in 2020 and I immediately embarked on a, a research master's degree uh, in finance and accounting because that's been what I'd done for my for my career. And uh, surprisingly, I ended up researching uh, Bitcoin and gold because I didn't really know much about Bitcoin or cryptocurrencies at that stage but it just sort of took my interest and I was always paying for it and it was kind of my first little retirement project um, so I did that research masters in 2020 and uh, by the end of 2020 I thought this is really interesting um, so I delved deeper and learned a lot more about it and eventually you know, I thought right well well do I do I just is that it I've bought some Bitcoin do I go back to retirement I thought this is so interesting it's such an interesting technology and it has so many so many facets not least of which is the ethics and the philosophy uh, that, that Chris alluded to there of freedom money and uh, and, the, and the political and indeed geopolitical consequences of taking back uh, the control of issuance of money back to the people and that's not just in Britain that's globally so a global neutral money that is not under the control of any nation state or, or any central bank, uh, but is controlled by the people of the world, um, is, is is really quite a, a big issue to be uh, a fantastic thing to be working with in, in my retirement. Um, I was planning to become a maths teacher uh, in my in sort of my for, for, for a few years. And whilst that was, a, you know, that was my giving back, I actually think that possibly my participation in this revolution is kind of more important for the world. I, I'd like to think so anyway. Um, certainly the revolution is whether my participation is or not we'll leave that for others to determine um, but but I went I wanted to go meet real Bitcoiners after having sort of learned about it during 2021 and so I went up to a football club in Bedford um, uh, which has been bought by one of the world's largest Bitcoin podcasters actually a chap called Peter McCormack he runs a podcast called What Bitcoin Did which you could look up and, and have a listen in for a few episodes if you like anyway he'd been, he'd, he'd a local lad and he'd always wanted to own a football club so he he bought you know this level let tier 13 right at the bottom of the of, of the english football league local club and he was about to rebrand it into into real bedford it had been bedford fc he rebranded it real bedford um and so i went up there to think well maybe there'll be a couple of other bitcoiners kind of watching the match and indeed there were and chris was one of them and one of and our third partner simon is also one of them um so uh yeah so yeah so that's the one of the things was i worked in finance systems in my career and it's this last mile what mattered is i've got the bitcoin we can use bitcoin but unless i can go and spend it in the pub the restaurant the cafe the local grocery store buy fuel with it buy the things that i need to to survive in my retirement I've always got to go back via this government currency and and and, <laughs> and 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 i don't want to do that so i want businesses to accept Bitcoin and then they can do with it what they like. I mean, if, if they want to convert it to fiat, that's up to them. If they want to keep it as Bitcoin, that's up to them. But what matters to me is that there are places that I can go to exchange my Bitcoin for other people's goods and services. And actually that's the fundamental function of money. 
So it's kind of important to complete that loop and completely take away the economy from reliance upon government money. Ultimately, that's what this is about. Um, mm. And it requires that businesses start accepting Bitcoin. So Chris Chris, and Simon, our other, our other partner, we all agreed that, that we wanted to do this. So we thought, well, let's do it together rather than going back to, and I live in Berkshire, Chris is in Surrey and, and Simon's in Northamptonshire. And we run Bitcoin meetup groups in our counties, but rather than operating just solo in our areas, why don't we do it for the UK? So this was a couple of years ago, and that's what we've been doing, that we've been doing ever since. So so that's, that's I hope that answers your question, Rob. Cool. And maybe I can just elaborate okay. on sort of uh, my bit in terms of I've talked about how I discovered Bitcoin. So yeah, I, as James says, so I, I met James and Simon at Real Bedford, well, Bedford at the Bedford football match. Um, and it was very early days, actually. I remember, uh, I think there were 20 people at this football match. As James said, this was a football match at the very bottom of the English pyramid uh, system, the English football pyramid system, and 10 of whom were Bitcoiners and five of whom were Simon, his wife and three daughters. And uh, yeah, we got chatting as as people as people with common values do. And we chatted throughout the football match. And then we went to the pub afterwards as well. Um, and as James alluded to there, we, we had this com we had common values. And one of those common values is we wanted to live on a Bitcoin circular economy. So for me, that, that this was really important because I'm removing money from state is really important and being free from from government money um, is important because as i said earlier bitcoin is finite so it's not subject to the inflation that regular currencies are that the uk pound is and that that's one of my my issues with the pound and the government they're constantly printing more money um, which is effect inflating away the money that we have in our pockets or in our bank accounts or, and that's essentially why we're really having to invest in other assets. That's not, you know, if if my money was stable, I wouldn't have to, you know, invest in these other new companies. I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't be business angel investing, um, but I'm forced to um, because the British pound is like a melting ice cube. Um, so I wanted to go and live on this Bitcoin circular economy, and I think James, myself, and Simon have. have wonderful complementary skill set so uh, james has explained his, his background which is fantastic as he says he's an accountant and so he can if your accountant i'm going to speak on james's behalf but if your accountant has any sort of bitcoin tax related questions feel free to, to reach out to us and james will talk accountant to accountant um i've explained a bit about my background simon he is um he's what i call a linchpin behind the bitcoin community scene in the uk and, and this is really important um he set up a, a separate entity called bitcoin events uk and um that lists it's a directory of all the meetups in the uk it's the community or the social layer of bitcoin in the uk simon's very prevalent and uh, very good with helping those who want to set up a meetup but anyway so we're linked up with all the the communities that we know of in the bitcoin communities in the uk and this is really important because we're essentially a marketing consultancy a bridge to bitcoin so to accept bitcoin in your business is actually really simple the ux and the ui of the technologies that exist are so simple we onboard businesses on zoom calls and you could be set up and running to accept bitcoin in minutes and we'll do it. Uh, hopefully, we'll have, we'll have time to give you uh, just a very sort of brief, very sort of uh, short example of how Bitcoin gets transacted. And you can you can all join in on the call. And if you're watching the recording, just follow the instructions. And um, hopefully, you'll be able to um, connect with someone who has some Bitcoin on this call now. Um, so the UX and the UI is really simple. So the tech is kind of it's it's the the minor part of it. So we're a marketing consultant. We don't own any hardware. We don't own any software. You as a business don't need new hardware. This is really important. There's no capital expenditure to accept Bitcoin. Um, some people say, do I need a Bitcoin point of sale machine? A special one like this. Um, we just stuck our logo on the top there. It's not ours. We don't own any hardware. This is just an off the shelf point of sale machine. Um, but you don't need it. Um, you can just use an old phone because this is, these are just, crappy android phones 
um, with a huge markup. They retail for about two hundred pounds on average. Um, but there, yeah, yeah, you can just use an old iPad, an old iPhone. You can even integrate it into some people, some businesses have an iPad already at the till. Um, so you can integrate it into an iPad that you have there. But this is a right, really long winded, long winded way of me of saying the important bit is the social layer, because we often come across businesses who might have been accepting Bitcoin for a number of years. They might go, oh, yeah, I've been accepting Bitcoin since 2020 or 2017, whenever it might be. And we'll say, oh, fantastic. How's it going? And they go, hmm, I've never had one Bitcoin customer. Or I've never had a customer want to pay in Bitcoin. We go, oh, what did you do? And they say, well, I've got this wallet um, and I have to accept Bitcoin. I have Bitcoin in. And and anything else? Did you do? I go, oh, I put a sign in the door. I go, okay, anything else? I go, no, and no one wanted to pay in Bitcoin. And if you're in the marketing uh, business, you'll realize that there was a major flaw with this. You haven't marketed yourself out to this customer base. So that's the, the what I call the secret sauce. We market you out. Once you start accepting Bitcoin, we market you out to this untapped customer base. And this untapped customer base is an extremely loyal and enthusiastic customer base. Um, so you would have first mover advantage because we're still really early. What we see is Bitcoin customers will go out of their way to use a Bitcoin accepting business. So much so, Bitcoin is, and this sounds absurd, but they drive across county boundaries. They will drive one, two, three counties to go and have a pint of beer or cake and coffee. And then they'll drive a few hours back home again. And they will be your most enthusiastic customers because they're so enthused to use this currency, which they realize is what they consider the best money that exists at the moment. Um, so they will go out of their way. They will choose you over a like for like business because you accept Bitcoin. So if you run a pub and you accept Bitcoin, they will drive past scores of pubs guaranteed just to get to your pub. If you're whatever your business and this applies to to any business. Um, so that's the important bit. Uh, we're, we're essentially a marketing consultancy and we connect you to the uh, this untapped customer base. It's all about driving additional footfall and additional revenue to you. Um, if you're not a fan of Bitcoin, just to caveat this, that's absolutely fine because there are solutions that exist that enable you to flip that Bitcoin at points of sale into local currency. So what that looks like is you continue invoicing as normal. So let's say you run a pub, someone comes in, orders two pints of beer, you say, right, £10 for two pints of beer, irrespective of whether they're a Bitcoin customer, whether they're an American Express customer, whether they're paying in Visa or they're paying in cash, you still say £10 for two pints of beer. If it's a Bitcoin customer, they'll give you £10 worth of Bitcoin, but there are solutions that exist that enable that £10 worth of Bitcoin to be flipped into back into, into £10. So you invoice in £10, you get £10. Or you can invoice in £10 and receive £10 worth of Bitcoin. Um, so, yeah, you don't have to hold the Bitcoin. Um, it's not a, a prerequisite. So you can still take advantage of this untapped customer base. Um, the I point is the transaction, uh, the transaction does not flow through the banking system. Okay. There are no banks. There's no Visa. There's no MasterCard. There's no Amex involved. Okay. Although it starts at £10 and it finishes at £10 if you flip it back from Bitcoin at your end, the transaction happens over an open peer-to-peer -peer decentralized network called the Lightning Bitcoin Payment Network, okay? So it doesn't go through the banking system. So you are it is still genuine a Bitcoin transaction, irrespective of the fact that it starts as £10 and finishes at £10. And just, can I just jump in with a quick little question there for you, chaps? Um, so I, I, I just wondered if you had a steer on this. So re researching the topic, I found estimates of anywhere between 1 million and 3 million people in the UK holding Bitcoin. I just wondered if you could, you know, if you had a more ac accurate kind of estimate than any of those. I'm, I'm going to default to the mathematician, which is James, because you you love <laughs> questions like that. You studied yeah. maths, didn't you, at university? I did. I did a maths degree originally, a long, long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
So the truth is that Bitcoin by nature is uh, is a permissionless system. So you don't have to apply for an account. There's no company there. You can't go to a database and find out who's got Bitcoin. Right? That's one of the important properties, really, of it. Of it. So there isn't a, a reliable source where you can know the answers to this. So you have to go and look at other other bits of data and try and make estimates. The, the, you could start with people who've once upon a time had any form of 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 Bitcoin that they may have picked up, at, you know, some random amount at some conference somewhere over the last 15 years of its existence. And it's sitting somewhere. They can't access it anymore. They they've forgotten about it entirely. And it means and they do nothing about it in their day to day life to people like us. And Chris and, and my partner, who are effectively 100% of our waking hours and everything that we do is about Bitcoin, the Bitcoin community, the technology, the evolution of this technology and its and its rollout across society and business and have have substantial asset allocations um, to Bitcoin. OK, so so there's such a range of, of the, across those different types of, of people with Bitcoin that I would estimate something in the region of, in the UK, if people like us, it's probably 100,000 at the most, right? Um, up to people who've actually ever had any brush with Bitcoin, maybe maybe the 3 million that you mentioned. Yeah, so that gives you some idea. It's a very wide band and it's kind of just a feeling. As I say, there's no hard data that you can get for good reasons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now that makes perfect sense. And so we've we've touched on the ideas of um, you know, there is there are uh, there is this large, pretty untapped market of, of enthusiasts um using Bitcoin that that people can potentially tap into, and also that um, you know, there's potentially um I'm not, yeah, l transaction costs or sort of payment fees can be very low or, or even zero. Are there other benefits you would say to, to people of accepting Bitcoin? So, yeah, you, yeah, you, you're quite right. The, the main benefit is these, this untapped customer base. Um, and I, I'm, I'm going to highlight how, how, how beneficial this could be to your business in so much as um, we charge nothing um to uh install uh, a system in place for you we charge no consultancy fees and i'll i'll come back because i'm sure you want to know why and rob you'll probably want to ask me that um so we we don't charge a consultancy fee uh almost all of the solutions uh, that exist globally um and certainly the ones that rise to the top that we implement um there's no subscription costs there are no monthly costs um so there's no sign up costs um and as I said earlier, there's there's no hardware costs related because you don't need a point of sale machine. You can just use an old phone or, or an iPad um, that you already have. Um, so there are no costs involved to accept Bitcoin. So as soon as you start, as soon as you get your first Bitcoin customer come through the door or onto your website, you've got an ROI of infinity. Return on investment. Yeah, the... thank, thank you, James. <laughs> okay, so your return on investment is infinity because so it costs you nothing. So the up, there's only upside as financial. There's financially there's only upside. So there's no financial outlay, and hopefully we can't guarantee, but hopefully you'll get at least one customer come through the door, and it's cost you nothing to do that. So so that that's a biggie. Um, we think well, I could get quite philo philosophical now about the the upsides, um, but what we often see with bitcoin is that because of what bitcoin is it often gives people hope and this i, I try and stray away from this but you ask the question often gives people hope because it's removing money from state and people suddenly become more optimistic let's say about the future um i'm going to leave it at that because we get really philosophical. it's a tool it's a tool that you can use to further freedom globally not just within the uk and it's a tool that doesn't involve having to stand on a soapbox in high park corner and try and convince people of the way you see things you just start doing it and you start joining in and you get customers who 
who who who understand that vision as well. They're the Bitcoiners who are coming into your business now because you're accepting their that that money, and you will. F I, I given the, the 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 my understanding of the of the ethics and philosophy that that people within together share, you will find that it's almost hand in glove with the Bitcoin community. Okay, it's just we've got an actual tool here. <laughs> it's not about convincing people or standing for election or policies it's about just doing something practical to take that take that initiative and take that control because at the end of the day that that power to create the money that a few have that the political system has that the rich have in our society is is in our view a source of an awful lot of the problems that we face today not everything but it will go a long way to 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 set us onto the right track. And so, I, I guess that's a really interesting positive in terms of this customer base that you tap into. You sub, you immediately have kinship with, um, because they're independent free thinkers um, who maybe have you know, that they ask questions. Um, and so, you have this customer base. That I said earlier, also really loyal. So, some examples are. Um, there's a um, a cattle farm in Wales called Red Ruby. Uh, Kate owns it. Red Ruby Kate, as she's known as, and she now has loyal, regular customers who order beef from her online, and she ships it out across the UK. Um, so you get this loyal customer base as well. Who time and time again she says she's got loads of repeat customers. Um, yeah, so you've got this not only this additional revenue, but loads of repeat customers who will probably have some kinship um with with your values. Um does that answer your question, Rob? Yes, I think it does, Chris. No, that's good. And I, you know, I think I think probably, you know, most of us in in addition to the kind of, you know, the nuts and bolts immediate benefits also appreciate that uh you know that story that um this is something appealing to us for for all the reasons that you describe so that's really helpful so how would we actually do this then so so let, let's say we're sold on the idea how would how would i actually set up today and um just be in a position to say to you know my next client oh hey you can pay me in bitcoin if you like so um what i would say is we would we would advocate for getting in contact with us um, and we'd run you through it individually uh, just because each business, all businesses set up slightly differently. You might be a limited company, you might be a sole trader. So the solutions that we would advocate for you as an individual business owner might be different to the next person that we speak to. So get in contact with us um, and we signpost you after a brief chat, we'd signpost you to the, the solution that we think is most appropriate or handhold you through that process. But we do it on a Zoom call and it would take minutes to actually I mean, put the nuts we, and bolts in. We could, we could, if 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 anyone wants to volunteer um, in the audience, we could take one person and take them through an example process. I mean, it will end up with you having a point of sale and solution in a wallet on your phone and it will take the rest of this call. We could do that and then everybody will be able to see what's happening. You'll also cool. have a recording of it, but, you know, that's... You know, or we could just do a simple lightning wallet. That might be good. We just, do, just if get, we can everybody get everybody to, to download the yeah. simple lightning wallet. Yeah, so this obviously do... wouldn't this wouldn't be suitable for 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 anything other than a one man one one person business where you're always taking all the payments. Yeah, so anything more sophisticated where you need a point of sale device, this solution would not do. Okay. But, so just to reiterate, so if anyone wants to accept Bitcoin, you get in contact with us. We'd set up a Zoom call. Normally we allocate an hour, but the nuts and bolts of setting, getting you set up are maybe, let's, let's say, 20 minutes from, from start to finish. Most of it is, is chatting. Um, but yeah, we can certainly download, get everyone to download um, our wallet to, and we can show how easy the transaction takes. And that takes a matter of, will be done in one minute, Rob, what do you think? Well, uh, what, I, what I was thinking was um... If it if it just takes a couple of minutes to maybe show us the first step that might, you know, or a first step that might be a really good thing to do now, because I also want to make sure we have plenty of time if people have questions for you guys and they, and they yeah. get a chance to do that. So what do you think? Do we have a minute or two to, you know, would, would it would now be a good time to, to show us that? 
or we can yeah. maybe just kind of tack that on at the end. I don't know how you guys are fixed. Let, so let's let's do it now. Let's yeah. Do it now. Should mm -hmm. we use you as the guinea pig and maybe I'll anyone else? Guinea, I'm happy to be the guinea pig. Yeah. Anyone else who's got their videos on and want to join in? Um, so, if if you have your smartphone, get a smartphone out. So, should we use Rob as an example? I can see, I can see Natalie. I think grabbing her phone and is Ray grabbing her phone as well. Good stuff. And go to if you've got an iPhone, um, go to the App Store or if it's an Android, Google Play, and. I'm going to get you to download a wallet. So there are lots of wallets that exist globally, uh, Bitcoin wallets. I'm going to get you to download the probably the most popular wallet, global wallet that exists. And it's called Wallet of Satoshi. And it looks like that. Um, it's a lightning bolt. So black background with a yellow lightning bolt. And it's called Wallet Space of Satoshi. And that's S A T O S H I. So it's actually popping up for me as I yeah. type it in. Yeah. Perfect. Got it. Okay. Fantastic. So it should take just a few seconds because it's a really simple wallet to download. I see that. I see. I see one's downloaded. Great. So Raise is downloaded. Great. And we'll just do a little bit of housekeeping. Um, once yours is downloaded, Click on the top right hand button. Uh, there's a little menu screen, looks like a burger. <clears throat> and you might want to change the default currency, it's probably defaulted to US dollar. You might want to change that to Great British Pounds or GBP um, to yeah. do that. And that. then what I would say is you can back up this wallet and there'll be a red button at the bottom that says login or register. So you can back it up with an email address. Um, so I would advocate for that because what it means is if you lose your phone or your phone breaks, you can download the app again and log in with an email address. So if you do that now, you just input an email address. They email you two words that you input into the app. So you don't have to do that now. You can always do that later on. I would uh, recommend doing it, though, because it's one of those things that people don't come back to and they put off and then... The reason for doing it is if you lose your phone or you get a new phone and you need to reinstall, you can use the email address that you've used there to recover your wallet. OK, so it's um, a safety reason for doing it. I you missed it. I just missed it while I was doing the currency change. How do we get to that bit where you put the oh, so you'd have a red button at the bottom. Yep. So you can go to the menu, Ray, yep. and scroll uh, down and you'll have a, mine's green because I've already registered. Yes. But yours would be red. So you I'll just... say login straight register. Uh, okay, login register. And then it says, Garen, just... please log in. Okay. Oh, you put your email in there. Yeah. yeah. You just put your email in there and they'll email you two words. And don't close the don't close the wallet. Leave it open and flip over to your email. Okay, to collect the two and then flip back. If you close it, you'll get into a a cycle of where it keeps keeps asking you for your email address rather than the two words. I need to leave that. Leave that. You sent two random login words to your email address. Okay, I'll, I'll yeah, do that. They've, yeah. they've done. So I've just been through that little process. Just done that successfully. Meantime, um, Alison just in the chat, just saying, where do you download? So, um, Alison, this if this is in the the app store for me on the iPhone. Um, I'm if you have an Android phone, it's uh, whatever they call their their app store. Maybe Play Store, Google Play Store. Yeah. 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 Okay, have so. you found it, Alison? Have you found one? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just look, sorry, I'm just looking. So you go to the app store. Yeah. Yeah. And then what do I put in? Wallet. 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 And then space of. Is it double L E T or what? Correct. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. W A double L E T. Space of. Oh, thank you, Rob. You put it in the chat. I've just popped in the chat there. So yeah, it's wallet. If you just type that in, wallet of Satoshi. What I found, Alison, was as soon as I started to type wallet, it kind of offered. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's come up. It's come up. If you yeah. make, this is the right one. It's got a yellow, a yellow lightning. Yeah. Strike. Yeah. 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 Great. OK, then. Cool. Good. All right. Cool. Right. So that should take a few seconds. So whilst that's downloading for you, Alison, what we'll do is um, I'll just run through some more housekeeping. So your wallet should all be empty. It should say zero sats on it. So sats, sats. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you, Ray. So sats are fractions of a Bitcoin, like we've got pennies to a pound. You have satoshis, so that's what sats are short for. 
sats to a bitcoin there are a hundred million sats per bitcoin but it doesn't matter how much they are it's just all you need to know it's like pennies to a pound um, you can't send any because your wallets are all empty because you've just opened this new wallet but you can receive so it's a really simple app you've got a send or receive button so if you click on receive you'll see there are further two buttons there's a bitcoin b button and there's a lightning button now if you click on the bitcoin b this is what we call an address. This is an address to this wallet. This is your Bitcoin on-chain address. So all of yours will be different. They'll be particular to your wallet on the Bitcoin B. Now, what you might hear in mainstream media is that Bitcoin is slow and it's not really useful for buying stuff with, for going to coffee shops. When they're talking about that, they're talking about Bitcoin on-chain. This is what you might call pure Bitcoin. And it's correct. It can take 10 minutes or more for a transaction to be confirmed. And it can cost as much as a cup of coffee or, or more um, on transaction fees. Um, so not very useful if you are buying coffee or you're going to a pub for a quick pint of beer or whatever. Um, however, um, and what I would say whilst I'm talking about this, um, we wouldn't. I wouldn't expect you to be using this on-chain address for this wallet. So treat this wallet like you would a wallet that you carry about yourself. So you'd only have a small amount. So normally we use Bitcoin on chain for large amounts. But you also have another button, a lightning button. So this is for transacting Bitcoin on what we call the lightning network. So the lightning network is like Visa or MasterCard in so much as you might transfer pounds on the Visa or MasterCard network. You'd move Bitcoin on the lightning network. And when you click on the lightning button, you get a lightning address, which looks like an email address. So mine, Wallet Satoshi have been very nice to me. They've given me Christopher at WalletedSatoshi.com. But you will have received a random, random two words and a random two digit number followed by at WalletedSatoshi.com. So what you can do is you can share, and this is a QR code representation of that lightning address. This is a multi-use lightning address. So if you share this lightning address with someone, anyone can send you any amount of Bitcoin multiple times. So if you share this lightning address, you can pop it, pop it in the chat. Um, we will send you, James and I will send you each some Bitcoin. So whoever puts in a lightning address, we'll send you some Bitcoin. And um, you'll see how quick and easy it is. Um, or you can read it out or show us to the camera whichever you prefer whichever you find easiest and let's see and we shall see oh there we go we've got we've got a couple in already oh i've got i've got one there what's that say ray i can't quite see it we've got a bit of glare ray well, you can read it out if you want it says oh i'll type it in the chat <laughs> just, um, thank just... you so I'm doing gross. I'm doing gross driver. You're doing Rob. Okay, okay I'll do the next yeah. one. I'm doing Natalie. So Natalie, I'm going to send you some Bitcoin now. So I'm clicking on the send button, and then I'm going to type in your Lightning address, which so is Rob. Rush. You're gross driver, aren't you? So I'm about that's to send me. you. Are you so, gross driver twenty two? That's me, James. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I'm pressing send now. Okay. Ah. So yeah, payment received. Yeah. Okay. So that's cool. Yeah. And then I'm going to do the same for Natalie. So Natalie, I'm going to give you what we call 210 Satoshi, which is about 11 pence, it says. So sorry, I'm, I'm partly Scottish, so that's my tightness. <laughs> um, so I'm going to press the send button. Mine's showing a sent. Hopefully yours has arrived. So can you show the screen? Has it gone green? Um, yeah. That's yeah, it. great. So what's so... happened here is... We, you have received money over the internet with no third party and no KYC. Natalie, I'm going to use you as an example. If you click on the transaction that's just come through, you should have something like that, which tells us about the transaction I've just done there, how many sats I've sent you, 210, which is about 11 pence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> says paid, total fees, zero. So it's cost us nothing Excellent. to send you that. I could have sent you a fraction of a penny and it would have cost us nothing. There okay. are fees involved and they do go up in time. Okay, Andrew, have you have we done Andrew? Rich column ninety one, no? 
I haven't. No. Do you want to do Andrew? Andrew, I'm going to send you yours now. Okay, and I'll do I'm Ray. Pressing send. I'll do Ray. So Ray, you are worrying. So that's paid, but... Andrew. Hopefully, uh, that's arrived. Seventy-two, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do um, Ray. Thank yeah. you, Ray. So, and so Andrew says, same... says he's got it. So that's good. Right. Um, so I'm gonna do. Uh, who am I doing? Ray. Ray. So Ray, I'm gonna send you two hundred and ten as well. Oh, quick at that! Look at that! That was really quick. Um, so that's how easy it is to send Bitcoin over the internet. Um, we're all in different parts of the country. You as a um, as a business owner, as a shop front, you you'd have a similar solution installed. So you've had you'd had something similar. Um, I'm gonna show you actually what it looks like. So you would have something like this on your phone or an iPad or whatever you want, or if you want to use a a dedicated point of sale machine you can um yeah. and it will look very similar in terms of i can charge somebody a penny for a penny suite this qr code comes up and you would now take the customer would now take their wallet of satoshi and they would click on the send button um and then scan in that qr code and much like you have all received a little bit of bitcoin you as the merchant would receive a little bit of bitcoin instantly uh, so, Alison, Alison, uh, do you want to talk us through where you're up to? Yeah, I'm just nothing. I don't understand what's going on because I couldn't really see which bit he's tapping on. And which yeah, bit OK, because I think you got slightly behind, didn't you, with trying to find the app? And so I've got the app. It's just uh, so where, where so where have you got to show us, show us what you're up to on the app? That's okay. the app. Did you register it with the email as well? So you've got the two words in. Sorry, go through that bit of the process. No. Okay, so let's let's just take a couple of steps back. So go back because because I think you were still struggling to download the app while Chris was taking everybody through the security step stuff. So yeah. click on that cross button, Alison, to take you to um, cross button. What top cross right hand corner? There should be a cross. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And now it should say zero sats. Does it show zero yeah, sats? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Let's do some housekeeping with you. Click on the three bars on the top right hand. Okay. Yeah. Change the default currency from US dollars and change that to GBP. So if you click on that, you can now scroll down to the Great British Bound Sterling or type in GBP. Hang on a second. So GBP. Hmm. You put G in the search bar, it'll. Oh right, okay. So GBP, okay. G um B. Okay. Yeah, great. And then at some point, you don't have to do it now, but as James says, you I might, would, James I would wants you to do it. Just now. do it okay. now because it's the sort of thing that doesn't happen. Go on, then. Click there should be a red bar just below at the bottom. Mine's green because I've already done it. It says login or register. So click, yeah. click on that and enter an email address. That you have access to at the moment. Yeah. Oh, login register. So okay. Um use your account on okay. Oh, here we are. I think that's so you put in an email address, yeah? Yeah. Okay. And this is just to back up this app mm. so that if you lose your phone, you can download it again and recover the right. app. Is it better to put the Gmail or my personal one? What would be better? Doesn't matter. It's entirely up to you. You can use whichever one you have access to now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's how simple it is to receive money over the internet. You guys, we, there was no KYC. Um, so don't close that app, Alison. And and I'll go, in, go to your email I pro ideally if on your computer if you've got the computer in front of you you can access the email there without leaving the the, the wallet okay because if, yeah. if you close it so can you flip either on your phone to your email or, or, or go to your email on your computer would probably be better uh right it's just saying check your email for... yes yeah so you need to go to your email right okay so it's can you do it can you can you do it not on your phone? Can you do it on your computer? The reason being that you need to keep that wallet open. I think that's what Alison's doing. Uh, I'd have to zap this down a bit, though. I'd have to take you down a bit, though, to go onto my email because you're on my. Uh, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. 
Yes, it's on Nemal as such. And um, okay, hang on a minute. So, so you should have received an email. Input those two words into the app there. So whilst you're doing that, Alison, I'm just going to answer. I see there are a couple of questions in in the chat. So uh, Natalie, um, you've said also, what about exchange rates? If the value of Bitcoin surges after the customer has paid the payment, but before the payment is confirmed, could they demand a refund? So as you've seen there with that example, with the wallet of Satoshi, the payment is almost instant. Um, so yes, Bitcoin is volatile, but it's not going to move that much that in the instant in the second it takes from the bitcoin to move from my wallet to your wallet it's not going to move that much if at all and so it's for all intents and purposes an instant payment that you get so um and certainly with online payments oh actually i think there's a, another question here so natalie you also said i tried to send a bitcoin donation to an independent journalist who had a bitcoin donate link on his website however it turned out to be an old address I'd only sent £10 to the test. He sent me a new address for the rest of the payment. Any advice on this would be great. If you put a Bitcoin address on your website, how long does it stay current? So you could put your Lightning address, that Lightning QR code that we just used, or the Lightning address. And as I said, that's a multi-use um, invoice, if you like, so people can send any amount. However, as a business, you'd create a, a new invoice for that customer at the time. And you can keep that you can you can create a payment window for that invoice if you like of 30 days 100 days but if you're emailing out this invoice you we can do it in such a way that when they click on that invoice or the link to the invoice that invoice is live for 10 minutes so it's live for 10 and if they don't pay in 10 minutes they just click on it again and it generates a new invoice for that same amount of british pounds value that's great. That's really answered my questions, even just using this, because um, I've been using Bitcoin for years and a few years ago, it just it suddenly went really slow. I don't even know if you remember that. I think it was around 2016 or 2017 and it was taking ages. And that's when I started using Litecoin. But this um, makes a difference. And I think in Bitcoin, it's usually if you ask a question, uh, you get a very sort of geeky answer, you know, so it's quite confusing. So I knew that there was a lightning network, but I didn't know what it, how it worked. So um, yeah. this has answered my questions. Thanks. Yeah, the lightning network has, has really changed mm -hmm. how we can now use Bitcoin, certainly in the merchant space and also peer to peer for small amounts of money. Um, and that previous question about the address, how long does it last? If that was an on-chain address, a layer one address, then it, it's persistent forever. Mm -hmm. So I would be quite suspicious if I got someone telling me that that address was no longer. Yeah, well, he sent me an address. address and said, you know, basically he puts out books and just says, if you want to donate, that's fine. So I had an amount in my head that I was going to donate and he got that amount minus the amount that he said. Hadn't Transaction tried. cost, yeah. Yeah. Right. But the idea that an address wouldn't be would be old, um, that doesn't make any sense. He could have lost access to it. He could have lost. Yeah. yeah, he could have forgotten his private keys. That's true. Yeah. 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 Uh, James, James, there's another there's another question from or there's a question from James as well in the chat. Is Bitcoin used in B two B transactions at all? So I think you mean do we have a business um, to business business to business um, Bitcoin circular economy? We. We're really meet, we're really at the B two C stage at the moment. Mm. There is opportunity for a small amount of B two B work. So coffee shops, for instance, there are, for instance, uh, coffee producers in El Salvador. And um, so you can buy businesses could buy coffee in Bitcoin, but at the moment we're mainly seeing it at B two C. Well, B two C is where we're seeing that's where where the growth is. Um, I'm conscious of time. Alison, how did you get on? Have you? Well, it's it's gone it's gone ahead, but um... great, fantastic. Cool. Okay, so click on receive, and then make sure the lightning button is highlighted. Did you yeah. say the light? Yeah, it's highlighted. Yeah. yeah. Great. What is your lightning address? So that looks like an email address. So mine says Christopher at wallet at satoshi dot com, but you will have two random words. And two digit, two a two digit number at wallet. Oh, I have to click onto that, yeah. No, you should just no, the... just read them to us or drop them in the chat. Uh, I don't understand because I've only got what's on the machine here. Yeah, that's it. So 
just right read under... the read the word under the under the QR code. There's a there's a string of letters or word two words. It looks like an email address. I can see it if you like turn it around. Address. If you turn it yeah. around straight to the camera, a bit closer. A bit closer. I can't quite make it out. I can see. So, if you just hold it really still there, Alison, I can say so it says Earthy Visitor 96. Okay. At okay. walletofsatoshi.com. So Earthy, as in soil, visitor 96. 96. 96, yeah. yeah. So if you look at your phone now, Alison, James yeah. is about to press the send button. Um, so I'm about to send. If you, I'm about to send you some money. Okay. Hi. So sent. Oh. There we go. And that's, right. how, that's how quick you have received your first fraction of a Bitcoin, Alison. And that's wow. how, okay. how easy. So again, this is a good example of how it's peer to peer. You haven't had to do any KYC. Um, there wasn't a middleman. There wasn't a bank saying who. Why are you sending Alison? Why is James sending Alison money? Who is yeah. she? What was that oh, for? Yeah, yeah, I'm not going to release those funds. Even though it's your money, I'm not going to release it because I don't know who she is or, you know, what you you want to buy some, I don't know, you want to buy some mushrooms. Well, where did she get these mushrooms from? Have they passed them? No, there's none of that. This is a real peer-to-peer -peer money like we've never seen before. And you could have been on the other side of the world. And it would have been the exact same process. And we're seeing how this is changing the remittance industry as well. So you'd have seen with the example there with Natalie, it'd be the same for everyone else. There were no fees involved. This changes the remittance industry in so much as if I were sending money to, say, family, let's say in the Philippines, I'm here in the UK and I'm sending money to the Philippines. It, it, if I use the legacy systems, I have to go to a Western Union to do that. Um, everyone knows why you go to Western Union and my relatives would have to do that in their country as well and as I say we all know why people go to Western Union that's a bit of a security risk isn't it a physical security risk because someone's probably walking out with a large amount of money or they're taking a large amount of money there and there's also the fees involved that Western Union and other money transmitters like to stick on they're quite hefty fees if you use Bitcoin over the Lightning Network that completely gets rid of that security issue, completely gets rid of those fees. The fees are, are negligible um, for all intents and purposes. So really changes the remittance industry and the same applies to your business. So there is no middleman. You'll be paying for those big, for this new customer base, you'll be paying next to no fees. You'll be paying minimal fees, certainly compared to the legacy system. Some of the time you'll be paying no fees. Um, just to go back to the questions, I'm conscious of time, Rob. Um, someone said, uh, what are our contact details, I think, um, or how do we get in contact? So bridge to bitcoin.com. Are you going to share yeah, that we'll, elsewhere, Rob? We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, have, we'll absolutely share that. We, we can we can certainly do do that in a second, guys. Um, the, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll pop it in an email to everyone um, as well. Um, just a quick question, and the, this may be a kind of it depends answer, but could you just speak briefly to if we start accepting this in in our business do how would we account for that in simple terms i mean is this income i mean it's like just just speak to yeah. that briefly just give us give us the gist if you can yeah so it's so so essentially the accounting is that instead of when you when you when you make a normal sale you go credit sales on the pnl and you debit cash in your assets okay that's the accounting entry so it's cash bitcoin is not cash it's defined in account by the accounting standards as an intangible asset. So what you do is you do credit sales, debit intangible assets. Okay, so your Bitcoin does it sits in a different line on the balance sheet, but the sales recording is identical. And all of the recording is still in pounds, right? So it's credit 10 pounds of sales, debit intangible assets, 10 pounds. It's ten pounds of Bitcoin if you've kept the Bitcoin, but but it its its value is ten pounds. So Bitcoin is not yet a unit of account. I mean, we're we're some some way around away from that. Probably 10, 20 years that might that might happen. But today, it's not a unit of account. So you wouldn't account for it. You wouldn't you wouldn't measure your your uh, your 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 accounts with Bitcoin. You would still use GB pounds or whatever whichever country you're in, whatever your basis currency is. Um, I mean, we run, we have the accounts for Bridge to Bitcoin and we only, we don't have a bank account at all with that business. We So we only deal in, in Bitcoin. Um, but all our accounts 
a submitted in pounds. And we have another business, it's a limited company again, another business that don't have a bank account. So we run two businesses with no bank accounts. And that's that's okay for us because our marketplace is only the Bitcoin community. So we don't ever need to receive fiat payments. Obviously, a normal business that you're running, of course, of course, you're going to carry on taking fiat payments. This isn't about replacing your fiat business. It's about attracting a small bit of new revenue for no cost. Okay. But all your accounting is done in pounds. Your VAT accounting is stays exactly the same. Um, I can talk to you in more detail about what you do about revaluing the asset and revaluation reserves and paying out expenses in Bitcoin and stuff. There's all sorts of different transactions I can go through as an accountant, but obviously, if you if you want to proceed to accepting as a business, get in touch with us and we'll have a one on one call or maybe two on two 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 on one call something like that, uh, so we can have a more detailed conversation about exactly the setups. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good introduction. Introduction. Thank you. It just briefly returning to James Graham's question, which was, is Bitcoin used in B two B transactions at all? Presumably, there's nothing really to stop us, right? I mean, there's no, 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 yeah. no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's right. just we. It, that's just a call for us to make, and we can we can decide whether we. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not. just that it's just if you think about where money starts, money starts at the consumption end. So, a customer comes along, a bitcoiner to buy something that there's some goods and services that they want, and it's just that it's just that the progress through the economy has to start at the ground. This isn't a top-down revolution. This is a ground-up revolution. Which is why it's it's a kind of slowly spreading, at, you know, at the roots of the economy, which is where all of us sit. It's not something coming down through the governments and the financial system. That's what's brilliant about it, actually, in many ways. I mean, it makes it slow to grow, but it doesn't get to the B2B level yet. Mm -hmm. Well, there are some examples, but it's not widespread. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess, and I'm just thinking, because a, a lot of our members are, they're, they're B2B, but they're small B2B, if you know what I mean. They might be a freelancer. That might work, yeah. You, yeah. you know, web designer, you know, that type of thing where, where yeah, you could you could see that. Oh, a web, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that might might be a good fit. A web designer could accept, of course, a web designer could accept a commission from a from another bit, from a Bitcoin and they pay in Bitcoin, yeah. So so mm -hmm. if you're offering a service, if that service ever is to, uh, to, to, to an individual, then of course, you you know, that would work. And I would describe that then more, more similar to B2C rather than B2B. But yeah, if you're, if you're selling your services exclusively to business, to, to other businesses, then unless that business is already accepting Bitcoin, you're not, they're not going to have any Bitcoin to pay you in Bitcoin, basically. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Um, um, just, how, just before... how are you doing? Yeah, sorry, Chris. How are you doing for time, guys? Um Chris and uh, Chris and James, I'm just wondering if we Very can good. get a couple more questions in, if you've got time, yeah. or how's it yeah. looking? I'm okay for a couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah, we, good. We're all right to go to what? Maybe ten past? Would that would yeah. that work? Or is that yeah. pushing it? Yeah, ten past. Cheers, Ray. I think I think Ray's dialing off. Nice chatting. Enjoy enjoy the Cheers, fraction, enjoy the fraction of the Bitcoin. Yeah, thanks for <laughs> joining. So, um, any other questions, guys? Uh, anyone with a question at all for for the guys? Custody question from Andrew. It's a very good question. Okay, so when we so when we onboard you as a business, if this solution were the one that we would recommend, we'd highlight to you that this is a custodial Lightning wallet. In other words, there is a risk that Wallet Satoshi could be hacked or could run away with the money or whatever, and that your funds are gone. Okay, so as Chris I think said, treat any money inside Wallet of Satoshi as you would. A wallet a physical wallet in your pocket with cash in it okay a hundred pounds a couple of hundred pounds whatever you, you, your risk you know tolerance is this is not somewhere to be building up large amounts of money okay when you in, in your business you're not going to be getting someone walking through yeah you know suddenly have you know 50 bitcoins walking in the next day and it's all your sales it's going to be a small drip 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 of just some additional revenue when it gets to that point that you're not comfortable, you think it's too much money, that's when we, you get back in touch with us or, or we send you a link anyway, but if you've lost the link, you give us, drop us an email or get in touch with us. Send you a link to a video uh, on, on some video training and you need to, you'll need to get something we call a hardware wallet. And that hardware wallet will allow you to transfer the money out of your wallet, Satoshi, to the layer one, to the savings layer. So the core blockchain, the layer one 
So you'll be taking it away from the Lightning Network and putting onto layer one, and that's where it's in then in self custody. So there is no one else custodying that. that. Obviously, you're taking the risk on yourself. You're becoming a sovereign individual. You take responsibility, and that's why you need to do a bit of training about this first. But it only matters once you've got an amount of money that is worth doing that with, right? The 10 P's or the pennies or whatever it was that we've just sent you, you know, the, the fees to get it onto that layer will be more than the money that, that you've got. Yeah, it's not worth it. That's not what this is for. Lightning is there for the day-to-day low value transactions when it builds up to a level take it off into self-custody okay but we'll go through all of that um, on a call as you get set up anyway that's that's very good and also just to stress we we will have a recording of this call which we'll share with people and also i'm going to send around again the resources that james shared which are more to the backgrounds of bitcoin so if if uh, any of this you missed any bits from today um don't freak out because you can go back and watch the recording and, and kind of watch stuff again if, if you need to do that. Any other questions for the guys? Um, Roland saying, thank you for the presentation. He's got to go. Madeline says, thank you for a very useful and interesting session. Thanks, guys. Good to see you. Any other further questions for the guys before we wrap up today? Well, it's, been, it's been a pleasure to um you know to be able to talk with you with you with you guys and we I'm personally I'm happy to do this again if, if there are other business business members of together who you know, couldn't make it today or ever I'm sure Chris and I'd be happy to to repeat as well yeah yeah absolutely um yeah so feel free to get in contact whilst we're waiting to see if anyone has is typing any questions in Rob if you can allow me to share my screen I'm just going to show you a couple of visuals um of what it looks like on a till um, and how simple it, it, it is to implement and i just want to reiterate how simple it is because often even within the space that we work in we we get people saying and it drives me nuts because these are people of who have influence they say oh it's really difficult it's really simple actually as you've seen you've downloaded a, a wallet uh, there's no kyc and we've sent you sats over the internet um, and also um, it's really implement easy to implement into your business as i said using just an old phone or an old ipad or an ipad that already exists some people have questions about um well how do i integrate this into my current systems so this is what i'm going to share with you now very briefly i'm just going to show you this visual which hopefully you can see um can you guys see that we can see i can um can you see the epos james yeah yeah so um on this bottom one here um you can see um it's really simple you can add a tender type button if you have a point of sale till um so you've got cash or card and uh, this business owner has added bitcoin or if you've got a more slightly more complicated this one here they've added bitcoin here you see you've got cash standalone card you've got some um uh staff buttons there if they're they're eating in the restaurant they've also added this bitcoin button so really easy to add those normally in in the back office there's a tender type button add tender type button um and that makes it really easy with regards to your stock taking and, and so on so really easy much more easy to implement than i think people think because I, we live in a society where which is filled with bureaucracy and red tape and hoops to jump and bitcoin's kind of the opposite of that Chris, can you put that back up? Natalie's just asked a really good question. She's saying, how much, and I think with that image, it shows it, how would you know how much to charge? Well, as you can see, it's all in pounds. As we said before, you still continue to charge in pounds. The transaction happens over the Lightning. So it gets converted by your point of sale terminal to a Lightning invoice. And then depending on your choice, you either get the Bitcoin keep the Bitcoin or it's converted back to pounds at the other end. And as I said, when we were doing the accounting, all your accounting's in pounds. So whenever you're thinking about a price, it's always pounds. In receipt at your end, if you have it flipped back to pounds, then it would be credit, sales, debit, cash. You've got cash in your business now. If you've, if you've kept it as Bitcoin, it's credit, sales, debit, intangible assets. Okay, so, so it's always, your billing is always pounds to start. It's just what happens to it well, how does it actually the payment actually happen? Well, that happens with it over the Bitcoin Lightning Network. It's just a piece of tech sitting in the middle that just means you don't need to use the banking system. And that's the key. 
another way that to look at it is i often say so we exhibit at trade shows um so often hospitality trade shows because bitcoiners like to go and meet up and go to pubs and coffee shops and talk about bitcoin so we're often we've often got a booth uh, a, a trade show um and i often say to people like restaurant owners i often say when they're sort of worried about accepting bitcoin and i have similar questions to what you just asked natalie I often say, well, did you know you accept US dollars in your restaurant? And they go, some of them go, no, I don't. So, oh, you do. You still bill, as James says, in pounds sterling. But if you have an American customer comes along, they get out their American bank card and they pay with their American US dollars. But the solution that you have in your restaurant flips the American dollars into the pound sterling for you. Um, so you you st you always invoice in pound sterling because that's our that's our medium of exchange at the moment. Oh, sorry, that's our unit of account rather. Um, so invoice in pounds, and you can get pounds if you want, or you can keep the bitcoin. So you still invoice. If you start invoicing in bitcoin, it just gets really messy. Don't do that. So yeah, do it. we're still <laughs> we're... <laughs> yeah. because they because you'll be updating your prices every day. I mean, it'd be worse than Argentina or Venezuela. <laughs> I mean, literally. Yeah. The prices will be changing by the minute <laughs> excellent excellent very good guys so i th this is this has been really good we really appreciate you you being here and uh, and sharing all this uh, really interesting info with us i just want to give you guys um, a minute just share with people where can they find you if they want to find out more if they want to contact you maybe what are all the different ways they can do that um great yes yeah. so you can contact us um, via our website bridge to bitcoin.com so bridge the number two bitcoin.com um, there's a contact form there so you can fill that in you can email us if you want so it's bridge to bitcoin at gmail.com so james is putting all of these in the uh, in the chat um, we're on twitter as well so you can direct message us on twitter uh, we're at bridge the number two bitcoin so yeah it was all bridge to bitcoin um those are probably the best ways email or contact form on our website or twitter dms we've also got um what have we got an instagram we've got an instagram website we're a nostra uh, but yeah the the three that i mentioned um the email or website contact form or twitter the easiest ways to to get in contact and we'll if you're interested, we'll jump on a Zoom call and get you set up in next to no time. Um, and then, yeah, the secret sources will market you out to the Bitcoin community and hopefully you'll you'll get some yeah. a little bit of extra revenue. Uh, so, so just to caveat that little bit of extra revenue, if it's we don't expect it to be a huge amount of revenue. So if you're if you have sorry to say this, if you have a failing business, it's highly unlikely that accepting Bitcoin is going to make your your business a success overnight. So this is just a way of tapping into a new customer base for you. Um, and it just cost. costs nothing, but also contributes to the to, to freedom. Yeah. So it's a kind of, you know, it costs you nothing. You probably get a little bit of extra business which might increase over time as well, of course, but, um, but, but, but you're also contributing. It's an action you can take that promotes freedom globally. Freedom, <laughs> as Andrew says, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with that? So very good guys. All right. Any, any sort of closing thoughts, comments, anything else you want to, you want to say before we wrap up today, chaps? No, thank, thank you very much. It's been an yeah. absolute pleasure. And it, feel free to get in contact and yeah. if, and if talk, you have and, yeah and talk to other to the other people you know in in together um you know declaration that, so that's a really the good word you know that's, because yeah it's, that's it's, a really good point actually because what we find is you you get the you get even better success if you have a small cohort of businesses locally together um so if you know other business owners in your local vicinity um you you get a nice um sort of domino effect if you like um, where you become an even bigger destination uh, for bitcoiners because then then not only are they turning up for coffee and cake they go oh i can i can go and shop at the local farm shop and have some coffee and cake at the place down the road or oh, whenever we go on a sunday we can have you know we can have a sunday lunch at the local pub or whatever it might be or there's a, a yoga play oh i'm going to go for my yoga session at that yoga studio and then i'm going to go and buy you know this or oh, you know fantastic oh, oh, freshly grown food at the local oh, farm. and there's a b and b so i can stay over as well yeah yeah 
so yeah become a real bitcoin destination um great but yeah thank you so much rob uh thank you everyone for for listening if you have any questions any follow-up questions or you want to accept bitcoin yeah feel free to get in touch and uh, we'll get you set up in no time excellent that's really good thanks so much chris thanks so much james uh, appreciate it and thanks everyone for attending really good to see everyone and as i say we will circulate the recording give us a little bit of time to do that but um we'll, we'll get that around as soon as we can um but have a great day the rest of the day everybody really good to see yes. you all Cheers, guys right. thanks so much bye for now